So we're going to talk about interviewing today, and we're going to be a little bit more interactive. Um, we'll kind of break the interview process up into some different segments. The pre-interview, which implies what? Prep, Prep right, before. Resume. Yeah, things that you do beforehand. Then we'll talk about the actual interview process, and then we'll talk about post-interview as well. So with that, let's talk pre-interview. Um, and feel free to ask questions anytime. You all know I'm not a real formal person. Um, on the pre-interview, you want to do your homework. What I mean by doing your homework is knowing who you're going to meet with beforehand. So if you're going into an interview with a company or an organization, know what the day is going to look like. Are you interviewing with one person? Are you interviewing with a panel? Or is it going to be a series of different people that you're meeting with? And who are those people? Try to find out a little bit more about them because if you can learn more about them, that gives you some more things to talk about and just make some casual conversation. Or also find some, connect, some potential connecting points. So maybe they went to Oklahoma State University too. Um, maybe you can see an activity that they're involved in. Um, so you might do a little bit of social media creeping, for example, um, to find out who they are and what they've been involved in. Do you have a question? Yes. How do you know like, who will be interviewing you? Um, ask. You can ask, so whenever they schedule your interview, if an employer calls and they say, you know, would you like to interview on such and such day? Um, as you're discussing those details, it's perfectly okay for you to ask, what is the day gonna look like? You know, who am I going to be meeting with? And make sure that you're taking notes as they're answering those questions so that then you can go back and do your homework. Okay. What are some other things you might wanna know about those individuals? And how can doing your homework help you? Right, you know, what's their role within the organization? Um, are, are they gonna be, you can look and see what their responsibilities are related to that role. So they may say, you're gonna meet with John Doe, who's the chief financial officer. Okay, well, look up and see what he oversees within the company. And a lot of times you can find that on an organization's website. And then that will tell you how it relates to the role that you're, inter that you're interviewing for. What else? <coughs> Right, right. you know, knowing how long they've been with an organization can tell you a couple of things. It can tell you um, when you ask that question, who to direct it to. If you're meeting with multiple people throughout the day and you've already identified that this person's only been there for a short period of time, well, maybe you don't necessarily want to ask them that question because their frame of reference isn't going to be that great. So you might want to direct that question to someone else you're meeting with throughout the day who's been there longer. Good. Other things? Meeting with financial advisor and those in that department, I would think you should know your money's numbers. Mm -hmm. All their customers, because they're going to ask. That all their questions will be geared to that. Mm -hmm. Maybe not all of them, but a good portion of them, definitely. If you're meeting with the human resources director, you'll know that that's the person that you can ask about more human resource related types of oppor opportunities and, and questions. You know, opportunities for training and development, for example, because that's something that usually falls underneath the umbrella of human resources. So it helps you identify what types of questions you can ask to who. And then, like I said, on a more personal level, it can help you just come up with some um, information to chit chat about, to break the ice and develop that rapport with the people that um, you're interviewing with. Something that I want to emphasize to you, interviewing makes a lot of people really, really nervous. And I can sit here and tell you, don't let it make you nervous, but it's going to, and that's okay. Um, but I want to change your perspective a little bit. A lot of students think of interviewing as being grilled. They almost equate it to um, being in that room with the, the bright light shining on you and being interrogated. And that's really not what an interview is. An interview is nothing more than a conversation. So I want you to think about an interview in the context of a conversation. It's two people having a conversation or you having a conversation with multiple individuals. Yes, they're trying to evaluate you for a specific opportunity, but you're also visiting with them 
and trying to evaluate if this opportunity is offered, is it the right place for me? So it's a conversation and really an interview on both parts and not just them interviewing you. So let that set you at ease a little bit. Uh, part of that conversation though is being able to establish rapport. And sometimes that means knowing who's in the room, a little bit about them so that you can um, have some of that chit chat and establish that, that rapport. Okay, prepare your interview attire. I'm not gonna get dive deep into interview attire because we talked about that on Monday. Um, but I do want to pause and see if you all have any questions since it's been a couple of days and you've mulled things over. Any questions about interview attire? I think it's another thing where you can ask the person who the interview. Like when I interviewed for my internship last summer, uh, I kind of asked the guy, I knew the guy who I was going to interview with, I kind of asked him, he said, oh, we have a strict no tie policy. Mm -hmm. And like, so it was pretty professional, but no tie. So, yeah. you know, like if I would have shown up and I just would have felt weird, like the entire bank would have their tie on it, or not have the tie on it. Well, and one of the things, too, um, whenever I talked to the, the student teachers that were going out um, a few weeks ago, um, Dr. Ramsey and I, we kind of tag team an interviewing uh, workshop for them, and when we were talking with them, one of the things that we emphasized to them is oftentimes you don't know um, whenever you're going into an interview, and you may not have had time to ask what's appropriate to wear. And again, there may be different definitions between business professional, business casual, and so forth. So if you will dress, you know, we talked about separates on Monday. If you dress in separates, you wear that, say that shirt, that tie, that jacket, and then you get there and you realize nobody else has a tie on, then it's really easy to slip that tie off. Or maybe everybody's wearing a shirt and a tie but no jacket. It's really easy to take the jacket off, okay? So if you're wearing separates, that makes it a little bit easier. But yes, it's perfectly okay to ask. And some employers will tell you up front, hey, you're gonna be doing this that day, so don't wear a suit. You know, wear business, dress in business casual. Um, again, you wanna go towards that conservative definition of business casual, though, is what I would recommend if, if you're not really sure how they define business casual. Okay. But you wanna take it out, um, as I mentioned on Monday, make sure that you always have something ready, of something business casual, something business professional. Make sure that you always have something ready when you're in the hunt that you can pull relatively quickly um, to go for an interview. So have it prepared, that's part of the pre-interview. Um, copies of your materials. What materials do you need? Resume, cover letter. Resume, cover letter. Yes, they may already have it because you submitted it and that hopefully is what secured you the interview opportunity. But that you don't want to take that for granted. You don't know if everyone that you're going to be meeting with that day has a copy. So you want to make sure that you take enough copies with you in case someone asks for it. Um, you should always offer it to them because they may have, yes, had your resume, but maybe it was submitted electronically and the HR person hasn't printed it off. Um, so you don't know if they actually have a physical copy to look at. So when you come in and, and you're introducing yourself, you ask them, would you like an updated copy or a, a hard copy of my resume? I have that with me. So make sure you, may, you bring your resume and your cover letter. What else do you need? Business cards. Business cards, potentially, yes. What else? References, right. If you have not submitted references, you always want to make sure you take references with you in case they ask. Okay. Make sure that your references are people who can vouch for your qualifications for the job. One character reference is okay, but by and large it needs to be people who can tell how you're going to perform on the job. People who are familiar with your knowledge base, with your work ethic, um, your skills, your abilities. So you can use faculty members, you can use former employers. Um, if most of your past employment has been family related, think about the customers that you've had, the clients that you've worked with. Um, use them as references as well. Okay. And three to five is the basic rule. Haley, did you have something you wanted to add? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about it on Monday, how they could get those business cards, and it is very beneficial to have those business cards with you um, because you don't always have um, a resume on hand. Um, and, if, and you may be meeting with individuals, you know, running across individuals throughout the day that you don't know you're going to run across. They weren't actually on your interview itinerary. And so you want to make sure that you've got something that you can leave with them um, just as a connection and a, and a networking point. Um, what other things do you need in terms of materials? Pen. Pen, yes. Mm -hmm. Pen to take notes. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
I would say probably something to take notes on because you don't want to be writing on your hand, right? Mm -hmm. So have that nice pad folio with a, a notepad inside, a clean notepad. Make sure that your pen is a professional looking pen. It's not the, pe the pen, the little quick pen you picked up from the you know, 7-Eleven store or something along those lines. Something that's got a, a logo, especially a competitor's logo. You know, make sure it's not one you picked up at a career fair from somebody who's a competitor at the company you're interviewing with. That wouldn't make a great impression. What else? Yeah, list of questions that you brought. List of questions. We're going to talk about that and how to develop it here in just a moment. You want to bring your transcript, copies of your transcript. They won't always ask for it, but if they do, you want to have copies with you. So make sure you take copies of your official transcript. I know uh, that just in my application internship for the USDA Headquarters here mm -hmm. uh, on the online was optional for the Hunter District or the official. Mm -hmm. But like I said, if you qualify for it with the interview, they will want the official transcript. Yes, you always take an official transcript. Don't take an unofficial transcript. You might take one unofficial transcript simply because your unofficial transcript will list the classes you're currently enrolled in. Your official transcript will not. So you might take one copy of your unofficial, but the other copies need to be your official transcript. The other thing that you might take are show pieces. If you are interviewing for a position and you have some show pieces that illustrate how you've done similar types of work, you know, we typically think of portfolios, for example, um, just for ag communication students or landscape architecture students. But really anybody can have a portfolio and it doesn't have to be a full-fledged portfolio. It might just be a few show pieces that you have. So if you're going to have to be putting together, let's say you're interviewing for an extension internship. How many of you are interested in extension work potentially? Okay, so if you're interested in um, an extension internship or an extension job and you've got a workshop that you put together for um, a youth group, well, take that workshop plan with you. It's a showpiece where you can illustrate to them, this is how I've done some similar work in the past. If you know that you're gonna be writing in the job. You're going to have to do press releases. Um, you know, we typically think of press releases, well that comes out of the communications department. Well, I'm here to tell you that in ag, a lot of the organizations we work with are small to mid-sized companies. And not only do you have your specific role within the company, but you're also the communications person as well. If you need communications done, you're the one responsible for it as well. And so you may have to write press releases at some point in time. Well, if you've taken AgCom 3103, I'm pretty sure just about all of you have written a press release. There's a writing sample for you to take so that they can see what your writing abilities are. So look at what the job description is and what responsibilities you're going to have and think to yourself, do I have any show pieces that I could illustrate to them what my skills and abilities and accomplishments are that I might want to take with me just in case they question me about that particular ability. Practice questions. So there are some key things I want you to remember from our conversation today, <coughs> and this is one of them. If you remember nothing else from our conversation today, what I want you to know is where do employers get their questions, what types of questions should you ask, and how do you answer questions? So we're going to talk about two of those right now. Where do they get their questions? They're going to get their questions off of your application materials. So that application that you filled out, if you filled out an online application, um, your resume that you submitted, your cover letter that you submitted. So you need to make sure that you go through that, those application materials and think from their perspective. If I was in their shoes, looking at me as a potential candidate, what are the questions I would ask off of my application materials? Know them forwards and backwards. Anticipate those questions. Think through what your response would be to those questions. They're going to ask you um, questions off of the position description. You need to go through the position description. What is this position? What would I be doing? Specifically think about situations you would be in in that particular position and what are questions they might ask you about those responsibilities and those situations. For example, if, they're, if you're in a situation where you're going to be dealing with customers or clients of some type, well, not all customers and clients are sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes there are difficult individuals to deal with. So they might ask you a question about that. How are you going to respond? 
you've got to look at the position description and anticipate questions they're going to ask you about the responsibilities of the job. Um, your online presence. I think we do a disservice or have done a disservice for several years by um, really hitting home the message to students of pictures. Make sure you don't have in inappropriate pictures on your social media. I'm going to tell you that it's all social media, it's all online presence, and it's not just your pictures. It's, yes, your pictures, but also your posts. What do they convey about your attitude? Um, it's your likes, the things that you like on your social media. Again, what do they convey about you? and your attitude and your um, beliefs and the things that you're passionate about. And they're going to look at, a, a, at it from a couple of different perspectives. They're going to look at your online presence from the standpoint of is there anything that blatantly raises a red flag, but they're also going to look at it from the standpoint of can we get a sense of more who this person is? We have a picture of who they are on paper through their resume and their cover letter, who we think they are. They're putting their best foot forward in the interview, but then here's their social media. Is that consistent with what we're seeing on paper and how what we're the impression that we're getting through that conversation? If it's not, if we're seeing a whole different side over here, then that raises a red flag. Now, different employers are going to dig deeper into your online presence than others based upon what the specific job is. If it's a job related to public relations, communications, social media, they're going to dig pretty deep um, because not only are they trying to see what's on there um, about you and whether or not it's appropriate, they're also trying to determine your activity level and your skill level in being involved with social media. If that is not the type of position that you're looking for, again, they're looking at it more from the standpoint of is there anything that raises a red flag and what's the consistency in this individual. And they are looking and don't think that anything is private. Are they going to strictly base a hiring decision based upon what they do or do not find online? Probably not, but they will use it as supporting evidence for making that decision to hire or not to hire. So I would encourage you to make sure that you look at your social media. Um, Google yourself, and don't just Google yourself on your computer because different things will come up if you do it from your computer as opposed to a different IP address. So Google yourself downstairs in the Student Success Center lab. See what comes up. Be prepared to clean up or address any of those issues. Be prepared to address any issues for someone who comes up that has the same name as you. Believe it or not, there are two Amy Gasways in this world, um, and they both live here in Stillwater. I don't actually know the other one. I would think in a small community like this, I would know the other Amy Gasway, but I don't. But if things come up about her that raise a red flag, if I'm in an interview, I need to be prepared to address those things. Questions about online presence? Okay, references. If you have not submitted your references, you always want to be prepared to address the question, if I were to talk to Dr. Weeks, what would Dr. Weeks have to say about you? <coughs> so be prepared to answer that question. If they have had your references, I would encourage you before you go to the interview, talk with those people that you listed as references, see if they've already been contacted and what the conversations were, just so that you can prepare for any questions that might stem from those conversations. And then lastly, and this is the toughest one to prepare for, they're going to ask you just some general cultural types of questions. Questions about you and how you operate, uh, how you're going to fit into their culture. And they have, this, they have this position that's open, but that position is within a broader con context of the culture of their organization. And you can answer all the questions right about the job responsibilities, about how you would handle situations. You can have the perfect resume, um, the perfect answers to those types of questions, but still not get the job if you really don't fit the culture of their organization because they're not just evaluating you for that position, they're also evaluating how would you fit in with the company that we have and the people that we already have on staff. And if they just don't feel like you're a good fit that way, then you're not going to get the job offer. And that's okay. I'm going to tell you to be okay with that. It's tough to stomach when you're a college student and you feel like you're the perfect candidate for the job and then you don't get the offer. 
but it's okay for you not to get the offer based upon a clash of cultures. Because chances are, if you did get that offer, you probably wouldn't stick around. It wouldn't be a comfortable place for you to be. Different strokes for different folks. There are different environments that are going to feel better and work better for different people. Questions about that? They exist. Um, they're not necessarily, you know, I wouldn't go in with outside references necessarily in mind. I mean, you may have a few in mind that you could ask if they um, asked you if you had someone who could speak to a certain thing. Um, but don't be surprised if they consult outside references. For example, here at the university, people know that we know people and we know students. And so students may list Dr. Weeks as a reference. Um, or something along those lines. But they may see on your resume that you've been involved in such and such activity. And because of their connections, they know who the advisor is for that activity. And so they just pick up the phone and say, hey, this is so-and-so with this company. The students applied for this opportunity. I saw on their resume where they're involved in career liaisons. Tell me a little bit about them. What's your interaction with that person, been, Amy? That's what's called an unsolicited, unsolicited reference. It's a reference that's built through networking connections. And those, those things are going to happen. That's why you should always put your best foot forward. Other questions? On those cultural questions that I mentioned, uh, that really ties back to this doing your homework piece. Um, you want to make sure when you're doing your homework, there's no limit to what you should know about an organization or about a position before you apply, definitely before you interview. So you need to um, do your research. You need to go online. You need to know the organization's mission, their values, their purpose. You know, what products do they produce? What service do they provide? You need to know what general locations they're in. What are their subsidiaries? Who are their competitors? How have they been in the news recently? There's no limit to what you should know. So you can do a lot of that research online on the organization's website, but I would also encourage you to look at government websites as well. Um, government websites are typically non-biased. The company or organization's website, it's going to be biased. It's kind of like Oklahoma State's website. You go to Oklahoma State University's website, it's everything orange and black, everything positive about being a cowboy. We're not going to put anything negative on there. Not that there is anything negative about OSU. But if there were, we were gonna, we're not going to broadcast that to the general public, right? Well, companies are no different. It's going to be rah rah Tyson, rah rah Cargill, or whoever the company is. So you want to make sure you're getting a different perspective as well. Look at some government sources of information. You know, look at for um, publicly traded companies. You know, look online, look at their financial reports because they have to post those financial reports. That can give you some information. You also want to not forget the human element, and that human element is what can help you with preparing for those cultural questions. Talk with people that you know that have interned for the company before. Talk with um, current alumni that are working for the organization. Get their perspectives. What is it like to work there? What did you like or not like about being an intern for that company? Now, I will encourage you to keep an open mind with regards to what their feedback is, because again, different strokes for different folks, different places fit different people. We have a company, for example, um, they're gonna be at Career Fair on March 1st, um, Schreiber Foods. I've worked with Schreiber Foods for several years, and we've had a lot of students that have interned with Schreiber Foods. And I've got some very good friends, former students, um, that I still keep in touch with. Um, two of them had exceptional um, internship experiences with Schreiber, have developed a career with Schreiber. Um, one of them did an internship with Schreiber, absolutely hated it, and would never go back. Different strokes for different folks. Different companies fit different people. And so you want to make sure that you're keeping a, um, an, that you're evaluating the information that you're receiving um, and realizing that that human information can oftentimes have bias. If they haven't had a very good experience, that doesn't mean necessarily that all experiences with the company are bad. So you want to make sure you consult multiple perspectives. But that human perspective is what can get you the best glimpse at what an organization's culture is. And um, culture is really hard to gauge from a website. 
Okay, then you want to develop questions to ask. So talk about where they get their questions. Any questions about where they get their questions? No? Okay, what questions do you ask? There are individuals in human resource circles that are called A players. Um, so right now, if you're following OSU social media, you know we've got you know lots of athletes that are signing. It's that time of year. Um, a players uh, are like blue chip recruits in the sports circle. You know, blue chip recruits, everybody wants, right? Well, that's what A players are in human resource circles. They are the um, employees that everybody wants to recruit. They're doing great on their job, and they're not necessarily looking but people come after them and then they start to consider different opportunities. So they're basically the equivalent of blue chip recruits. A players ask questions when they're looking at opportunities in four different areas. And so these are the four areas that as you're thinking about what questions should I ask, these are the four areas you should ask questions about. Number one, questions about the position. You will have done your research, you've read the position description, you've talked to people, um, so you have kind of a gauge as to what that position is, but there's always going to be things that you don't know, questions that you still have about the position. So what are those questions you still have about the position that you want to answer? You know, most position descriptions will say other duties as assigned. One question you might ask, what are some of those other duties? So what are the additional questions you have about the responsibilities of the job, or about the job specifically? Questions about the organization. Again. You've done your research, you know about the organization, but what have you not, what questions have you not been able to get answered about the organization? What do you still want to know? Questions about the people. Again, you've done your background, homework, you know maybe the major positions, but not every employee within the organization is going to be listed on the website, nor is their background. You want to ask questions about the people, the people you'll be working with, the people you'll be working for, um, the clients you may have. What are the demographics of the people that I'm going to serve or the people that I'm going to be assisting? So the position, the organization, the people, and lastly, the opportunity. And the opportunity is different from the position. It's not the same thing. The opportunity means where can I go from here? So those are questions like um, if it's an internship, it might be um, do you use your internship as a recruitment tool for full-time opportunities? How many interns, what percentage of interns do you convert to full-time on average? If it's not, if it's a full-time opportunity, then it might be tell me what career path, if I started in this position, what career path I might follow with your organization in the future. In other words, where could I go from here? So the position, the organization, the people, and the opportunity. Questions about that? All right. Let's flip it over to you guys and let you have a chance then. <coughs> so I want you to put yourselves in their shoes. You're evaluating, um, we're going to say your group, your team for an opportunity. I want each table to come up with um, questions that you would ask a candidate. If you were interviewing an ag leadership student from Oklahoma State University for a position, what are three questions you would ask that candidate based upon the fact that they've got ag leadership listed as their major on their resume? Is this like with full time or intern? Like what? what um, we'll say for full time. Okay. okay. So I'm going to give you about a minute and a half to figure it out. So that's not very long.
got about 25 seconds. <laughs> That is probably not a response you should use. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I heard this one talking a lot. You guys were kind of talking quietly, so I'm going to let them go first because uh, I heard them a little bit more. <laughs> Give me your three questions. If I were an employer, or if you were an employer and you were evaluating someone who had ag leadership listed on their resume, what are three questions you would ask them about ag leadership as their major or as their educational background? Our first one was um, what experiences our major provided us with that like qualifies you for the position. Okay, so that's a good one. Heading on a specific skill set. What else? Uh, one that I actually got asked last summer before mine was, "How do you define leadership?" Mm -hmm. Good. One more. Why, why should I hire you? Why should I hire you? And that's not necessarily specific to ag leadership, but that's a good question that you need to be prepared to answer. Okay. Good. Good. So are you getting the gist of how an employer looks at different things on your resume and thinks, okay, what can I ask them about this? Okay, let's turn it around and talk about what would you ask. So I gave you four areas. Come up with two questions in your group that you would ask an employer. So as we're being interviewed, we ask the questions. Mm -hmm. You are the candidate. Two good questions you would ask the employer. two really good questions you would ask to help you evaluate the opportunity. Uh, what's your hire back rate for interns? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. What's your conversion? They actually, they call it a conversion rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what is maybe backstop this job opportunity that I cannot find on the internet or on any information through companies or with you guys personally? Okay. Be careful about how you phrase things. I wouldn't necessarily call them hidden facts. I would just say, I would preface it more with, I've looked online, I've seen the position description, um, I've done a little bit of research, but what is it, what more should I know about this position that you think I may not have found in my research? <laughs> because if you say, you know, what's hidden, it almost implies that they're trying to hide something. And you want to make sure that you're not lying. That's, that's kind of a negative connotation. Okay, let's go with this group over here. Two good questions. I heard a lot, so <laughs> good ones. So. Like asking what, what's been your experience with companies? Okay, good. What else? Uh, I always came up with like, what are the goals of the company? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty broad one, and you should have a pretty good idea of goals by looking at the company's website and looking at their mission and their vision and so forth. So you might frame it in a more specific way, uh, letting them know, you can also in include some information to let them know you've done your research. I see from your website that uh, your vision is to do this. 
within the next five years, if I were in this position, how would I contribute to that? Okay, good. Good job, guys. Okay, expectations. They are going to have some expectations of you coming in. Um, some of these are no-brainers. They're going to expect that you've done your homework. They're going to expect that you have good questions. We've already talked about those. They're going to expect that you can articulate what you can do. College students oftentimes have a hard time with this. Um, I was just visiting with uh, an ag comm group that's doing a campaign project um, for me the other day about this. One of the biggest challenges with college students is helping them reflect upon their educational experiences and the other out-of-classroom experiences that you guys have had and really thinking about what did I learn from those things that give me a skill, a knowledge base to help me be a better employee for this organization. You need to do some reflection on that before you go on the interview because that's what they want to know. They want to know what can you do for them. They don't necessarily want to know what can they do for you. So you never, especially in an introductory interview, a first round interview, never, ever, ever ask questions about what's in it for you. Don't ask questions about salary, vacation, uh, tuition reimbursement, any of those types of things in a preliminary interview. You don't ask those questions until they bring it up or until you have an offer on the table. They're going to expect that you're actually excited about the opportunity. So even if it's really your last ditch effort and not your first choice of job, fake it till you make it. Let them think that you're excited about this potential opportunity because they're going to expect that. Um, they're going to expect you to follow up. You don't just do an interview and then let's hope something happens. You do an interview and then you follow up with them. You send them a thank you note after the interview. You address questions that maybe they had during the interview that you couldn't address right then and there. Maybe there's a question or two where you have to say, you know, I really don't know the answer to that, um, but I'd be happy to find out and get back with you. Well, follow up and get back with them. Do what you said you would do. And they're going to expect that you follow the golden rule. What's the golden rule? That is not the golden rule. <laughs> yes, treat others as, they as you would want to be treated. Okay? So basically be nice. They're going to expect that you're nice and, and respectful. Okay. Keep in mind that what they are going to take away from that interview interaction, 55% of, of that lasting impression you're going to leave is what they see. That's why it's so important to dress appropriately and to also have the right body language, the right posture, a smile on your face, to make eye contact. Because those visual impressions, 55%, the majority of what they're going to remember is going to be from that interaction, not necessarily what you say. Now, that does, this doesn't necessarily mean that your responses aren't important. It just means that what, how you look and how you say the things you say, you want to make sure you have those in check so that maybe they can remember a little bit more of the content of your responses and the time that you put into preparing those responses. During the interview, here's one of the other key things I want you to remember. Um, so first impressions, we've really talked about this a little bit, your attire, introductions. When you're doing introductions, um, you should always be standing. So you come into the room and people are introducing, don't be seated and then introduced or be introduced to. Make sure that you're standing. Don't sit until they give you permission to sit. And if they don't give you permission to sit, then you might ask, can I have a seat? then you can sit. Um, shake hands. We're going to have everybody practice shaking hands. I want you to turn to a partner. And this is how you shake hands. It sounds very elementary, but we're going to practice it because a lot of people don't do it very well. Web to web, firm grip, a couple of pumps, and you're done. That's how you shake hands appropriately. Distance, your arm should be in an L. If you're leaning in, you're invading their personal space. If you're out like this, it makes you seem very standoffish. So the L is where you need to be. So everybody stand up and practice handshake. Good job, good job. Have a seat. So 
make sure that you're standing. Have a firm handshake. You want to, you want your handshake to be firm. Um, you also want to kind of match the grip of the person you're shaking hands with. There are two exceptions to that rule. If they are a tight gripper, this is not the time to match them with a bone crusher. Also, and ladies, this will more often happen to you than it will to guys. There are guys out there in this world that sometimes are afraid to shake our hands. I think they think that we're dainty and they're going to break our bones. And so they give us the little dead fish handshake. Don't do that. If they give you, oh, I do too. If they give you a dead fish handshake, you give them a firm one right back. Okay? Okay, how do you respond to a question? How do you respond to a question? There's a technique called, huh? No, not with the question. Um, you respond to a question using the STAR technique. STAR stands for Situation or Task, Action, and Result. It's particularly useful for behavioral questions, and more and more employers are using behavioral-based interviewing. Behavioral-based interviewing um, is an interviewing technique that, get, that gets you to give them examples of how you performed in the past. And the reason employers use it is because the best indication of how you're going to perform in the future is how you performed in the past. People are creatures of habit. So um, some behavioral interview questions are things like, tell me about a time when you've had to deal with that difficult customer. Tell me about a time when you've had to practice leadership. Describe a situation where you were in over your head. Those are behavioral types of questions. The strategy to use to answer those is the STAR technique, but you can also use it when they ask non-behavioral questions. If they say, have you ever had this type of experience? Well, a skilled interviewer won't ask you that question because that's a yes or no question. Yes, I've had it or no, I haven't. That yes or no answer doesn't give them a lot of information to be able to evaluate you. So answer yes or no, but then give them an example using STAR. Tell them about a situation or a task at hand, what action you took, and what was the result or the outcome of that situation. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, so if you already like given one of those examples, so you say they had to write an essay for it too, mm -hmm. and you've already referred to like like a star example. Mm -hmm. Is it best to refer to that during your interview, or to do a different? Either one. You can refer to that one. You want to. You do want to make sure that you're using a variety of examples and you're not consistently going back to that one example. If you refer to the same example once or twice, that's okay. But don't always go back to that exact same example. And that's why thinking ahead from the employer's perspective as to what questions they might ask is important because then you can anticipate the types of examples you're going to need for that interview. Have a repertoire of different examples that you can use that illustrate your skills and abilities. Also make sure that there's <coughs> diversity in those examples. Not just that it's not the same example, but that the examples don't just come from your classes. They come from elsewhere. Or that they're not all examples from high school. Okay? You want to make sure that you use some diversity in those examples. So situation or task, action and result. The reason examples are so important is because those are the things that make you unique or memorable. They may be interviewing, let's say it's an on-campus interview, preliminary interview. A full on-campus interview schedule for an employer is 14 interviews. So they're interviewing 14 different students if they have a full schedule. They start at 8.30, they end at 5 o'clock. What if you're that 8.30 interview? How do you make, because that's the only one that's in your schedule. How do you make sure that at 5 o'clock they can still remember you? You do that through your examples. Other people may have similar responses. No one has your exact same response because no one has the exact same example that you have. Those are the things that make you unique and memorable. So come up with that repertoire of examples you can use that illustrate your skills and abilities. Make sure that everyone you meet with during an interview that you get their business card so that you can follow up with them afterwards. If they don't have a business card, make sure when you exit that room that you write down the name of the people that you met with so that you don't forget who it was that you met with. And then you can try to find their contact information. Pick up the phone and ask the secretary for the contact information. What questions do you have about answering questions during the interview? Um, is it always best to like, if it's like a yes or no question, mm -hmm. is it always best to elaborate or to wait for them to ask you? To I would elaborate. Go ahead and elaborate from the beginning. Um, if it is a
panel interview. If you are interviewing with several people in the room, during the interview, make sure you make eye contact with everyone that's in the room. If you can, try to start your response with the person who asked the question and then make eye contact with everyone during your response and then try to end your eye contact with the person who, who asked the question originally. But the most important thing is just make sure that you make eye contact with everyone so that you don't feel, they don't feel like they're being alienated. Okay, some extra pointers. A lot of these we've already talked about. Respond with more than one word. Make sure that you answer the question that was asked. I've done mock interviews with students that I've asked a question, they start to answer it, and then they go on some tangent, and then they forget what the question was that I asked, and they end up not answering it. So make sure that you address the question that was asked, even if it's a difficult question for you to answer. For example, GPA. If they ask you about your GPA, for some students, that's a difficult question to answer because their GPA is not really where they'd like for it to be. There are some good reasons to not have a great GPA and there are some not so good reasons. Whichever one applies to you, you've got to be prepared to answer that question. Okay? Um, and answer it frankly and honestly. Keep it positive, don't criticize others. When you're using that STAR technique, if they ask you about, you know, tell me about a coworker that you worked with that you just didn't see eye to eye. Take responsibility for what your action was in that situation. Don't criticize the other person. It doesn't look very favorable upon you if you're criticizing people in your responses. Um, we talked about doing background information and homework so that you can create conversation. At the same time, you don't want to monopolize it. I did a mock interview one time with a student. 30-minute um, 30, 30 mock interviews typically are what I scheduled. I asked one question, we spent the whole 30 minutes on that one question, and I learned more about that student than I ever wanted to know. Don't monopolize the conversation. Answer the question, and then let them speak and continue on. If you don't know jargon related to the industry or the position, that is not the time to fake it till you make it. Be careful about using industry jargon. You want to make sure if you're using it, you're using it appropriately. Um, if you don't know, do admit it, but offer to find out for them. And then you want to prepare for your interview, but you don't want to memorize responses. You don't want to look like that eager kindergartner ready to um, respond to a question. For phone and Skype interviews, uh, make sure that you confirm time zones. Make sure, go ahead and dress the part. Research shows that you will actually perform better if you're dressed the part for an interview, even if they're not going to see you. Um, and you want to make sure that you're in a professional surrounding. You're not in your car where they can hear other cars going by you. You're not going through the drive through at McDonald's. These are some of the horror stories I've heard from my peers at other universities. Um, yeah, make sure you're in a professional surrounding. Um, and make sure that you have a plan B if you're on your cell phone. What if the call drops? You know, I would encourage you to find a landline. And you can always schedule our conference room to do a phone interview or Skype interview if you need to. And then after it, send a thank you note within 24 hours. If you know they're going to be making the decision quickly, send a thank you email and then follow it up with a handwritten thank you note. Um, keep researching when they make an offer, accept it or reject it. reject it, you need to respond to that offer. And then once you've accepted an offer with someone, you need to withdraw your applications from consideration at other places. And once you've accepted an offer, you are committed to that organization. And a surefire way to burn a bridge is to renege on an offer you've accepted because something better came along within a short period of time. Okay, what questions do you have that I can answer to help you be more successful? <coughs> What's the difference either way between like two job offers and the one that you want more is not been offered yet, but the one you do really want is? There's not a perfect time to wait. Um, what you need to do in that situation, and I get this question a lot from students, because it does, it happens a lot. Different companies have different hiring timelines. If you've got an offer for an organization, but you've got another one that you've interviewed with, um, or you've got even your application just in with, and you want to know where you stand with it because you've got this offer, but you really want to know you'd like to work for this company too, then what you do is you ask company A, they should at minimum give you a week to decide. That's standard in the industry is a week to get back with them. Don't think if you get an offer you have to answer it like that. Ask them, when do you need a decision because I'd like the opportunity to think things over, to look through the benefits packet, to look at 
the geographic area and get some information on housing? Could I let you know, and you might even throw out a date, could I let you know by this date? Would that be okay? So you work that out with them. Once you've established that, you go back to company B that you really want to hear from, and you ask them, this is who I am, I've applied for this position, or I've interviewed for this position, I have another offer, but I really want to know where I stand with your organization. Can you tell me what your timeline is? You know, they, if you haven't interviewed yet, they may try to get you in for an interview in a hurry so that if you're a viable candidate. Or they may say, you know what, we've looked at applications, you're not in our top round. At least you'll know where you stand. Just be honest um, with the organizations. You're not necessarily pitting them against each other, you're just making sure that you consider all options um, before you make that decision. Sometimes it's not gonna work out. Company B can't make a decision or move you fast enough before company A needs an answer. There's a lot of risk involved in job searching and you just have to evaluate what's your gut feeling. Are you willing to take that risk? Do you wanna take the risk and wait? Do you wanna accept the offer? And that's a personal decision. No one can make that decision for you. You've gotta make it for yourself. I've always been taught to shake the lady's hand first and the guy says, that right, and you still left her right. Yeah, I would shake her hand first. That's, okay. that's chivalry. Yeah. Another question. Like, say you're in an interview and a guy or an employer asks you, have you interviewed or applied with any companies in relation to a like, or any competitors? Like, how would you answer that question? I'd be honest. Yeah, so, you know, if, if you've interviewed with competitors and they ask you, um, have you interviewed with any of our competitors or have you interviewed with company A, company B, then I'd be honest and, and let them know. Partially the reason I would be honest, and that, that is a question that they, can, that they can ask. It's not an illegal question. Um, part of the reason I would be honest is because especially in our industry, it's a small world. People know people. I mean, it's just like what I do. I know the people who are in my positions at other colleges and universities. The recruiters that recruit for different um, organizations, they travel together to career fairs. They see each other career fair after career fair after career fair. So if you tell them, no, I didn't interview with this company, they may go back and ask, did so-and-so interview with you? And if they find out the answer is yes, you've just proven that you're a liar. So I'd be honest. If it makes a, dis a difference and they don't want to hire you because you interviewed with a competitor to explore your options, is that really a company you want to work for? Good questions, guys. Okay, I'm going to stick around. Uh, so if you want to ask questions one-on-one, -on -one, one, feel free to do so. But thank you for your participation and attention. You guys have probably asked some of the best questions of a class that I've talked to, to about interviewing. So good job. Yeah, let's give Ms. Amy a round of applause. Hopefully I didn't talk with my hands yeah. too much to make it good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>